Is there a preseason pledge in hockey? I'll explain. We got a game to go through against the Capitals and a game to look ahead to in the Bruins. Coming up on Locked on Sabres. Your Locked on Sabres, your daily podcast on the Buffalo Sabres. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And thanks for making Locked On Sabres your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're also available on our YouTube channel where you can watch along. You can comment on the show if you'd like to do that as well there. You can also hit us up on Twitter, uh, which is what I'm more actively searching through at Sneaky Joe Sports uh, or at Locked On Sabers if you want to talk about it there as well. Our most recent episode was about Patrick Kane and the rumor that Darren Dreger dropped on Friday that he knows that the Sabers are interested in Patrick Kane. I told you why I don't buy it. And I told, while also telling you it's not impossible, but I also told you why I didn't like the idea. So if you missed that show, be sure to check it out. Ron commented on the video. I agree that Kane will block somebody younger and at this point better and probably chew up too much cap for little return. The cap part, I will say, Ron, is not the biggest deal to me because the Sabres are so far below the cap still that Patrick Kane in a one-year deal, assuming it would be a one-year deal for whatever it is, it could be the $5 million. It wouldn't impact the cap. Um, I think the other points, though, you make are the ones to, the, to make. Uh, him blocking somebody younger, him not being as good of a player at this point in his career. Sabermetrics chimed in. I like this tweet. Um, from them, they're a good follow on Sabres Twitter. And they said, uh, what was the exact point? Here we go. A lot of talk about Patrick Kane's numbers last season, but not a lot of talk about his hip resurfacing procedure is a pretty difficult procedure to return from. I mentioned that in passing, but didn't make as big a deal about it as I probably should have. Um, the Kane idea, like anyone that wants to bring him in, it's a novelty idea, but you don't know what you're getting just because of him coming off the hip. You know, like you might think there's a ceiling already because of his age and what he did last year and the year before that, even to a lesser extent, but Kane had a major hip surgery and where does that leave him? You know, in his return to play, he might be even worse than he was last year. I think the idea of the procedure though, is that we would be better. Um, did see a comparison to a Joe Thornton in Toronto type of deal. Give him, you know, a bottom six minutes, offensive starts, power play time, and whatnot. That's the the most I, the furthest I could go, though, on Kane. If you want more on that, check out our last episode. We got two preseason games to talk about. A little bit later on in today's show, a preview of Tuesday night's matchup against the Boston Bruins. Milan Lucic back in town in a Bruins uniform. And I got a thought on that considering the Sabre, who the Sabres are starting in net um, and also what the lineup will look like. Uh, a very interesting first line for the Sabres that we're going to see night one uh, or excuse me, night one of the home preseason schedule if you want it against Boston. But I would guess not night one of the regular season. That's coming up. Before that, though, how about a little recap of the Sabres opener against Washington in the preseason? It was a game that I was checking in on during the Bills game. Sunday was a good day for, day for Bill uh, Buffalo sports fans. You had the preseason game. If you wanted to check in on it a little bit, I'm not sure a lot of Bills and Sabre fans did that. Bills game probably had most of your attention. That's why you come here. Uh, or you have the highlights package, too, to check out what happened after the fact. Went back, watched the game after the fact. And, again, I was checking in a little bit throughout as well couple of players that really stood out for me. J.J. Paterka is number one. J.J. Paterka shined. He had a nice goal, went in on a breakaway, backhand, forehand, backhand, forehand, super quick stick handling. He really did deke the goaltender out, but didn't lift the puck over the pad. But he got it back, banked the puck in off the goaltender for the Sabres' first goal of the game. Paterka also with a shootout goal um, as the Sabres won in a shootout. Paterka was good all the way around. He looked dynamic. He looked, you know, like he was doing very well with his skating. He looked you like the fastest player on the ice, which you would hope that he will, uh, especially in preseason action. Just was very impressed. He was playing in a top six role with it being preseason. And if you remember way back when I did my season 
um, exit interview on JJ Paterka, the story, you know, the moment part of my thought process in him is carry the momentum the way you finished last year into this season. And he's someone that was posting a lot of workout videos, looked like he was going nuts with the, with the on with the on ice training in the off season. So that's a good sign. But last year, JJ Paterka, he remember had a story. Uh, it was a three part season. First 25 games of the season last year, six goals, 14 points. Not too bad for a rookie. The middle 29 games completely disappeared. Completely disappeared. Pretended it was, you know, pretended to be a ghost for Halloween and never came back. One goal, three assists, four points in the middle 29 games for Paterka. And in the final 21 games, Paterka had five goals, eight assists for 13 points. That's a 20 goal pace and a just roughly 50 point pace over an 82 game season. After the 21 games, he goes to the world championships. He dominates for Germany. He gets named player of the tournament. And that's before he did all he did in the off season, carry that momentum into this year. And in preseason game, number one, he looked great. It's preseason preseason pledge. Can't take too much out of it, but worth noting that he looked very strong. I thought Peyton Krebs looked really strong as well. He got on the score sheet too, scored in a nice deflection, but, was making a lot of crisp passes, was doing well as a puck carrier, playing the center position. was wearing an A, by the way, on the night. Um, I like Peyton Krebs as well. Zach Benson. Um, you know, I didn't notice him throughout the entire game, but he had some really nice moments, including the goal he scored in the third period on a deflection. He kind of burrowed his way to the front of the net, and it was a very nice tip. I, I think I want to make two points about the goal that Zach Benson, the Sabres' first-round pick from 2023, scored in his first preseason game. Two points I want to make about that goal. One, the tip is nice. The tip is a skilled goal. He knocks the puck down right where you're supposed to. It goes between the legs of the goaltender. It's a skilled tip, good hand-eye coordination, um, and he deserves a lot of credit for that play. I will say, though, especially for how small he is, because you can see it. He is small and very light at this point. Preseason action, you're able to go to the front of the net like that. He won't get to that spot in the regular season. Not against that big defenseman. He, I don't even know who it was for Washington, but he was up against the big defenseman that just let him have that space. Because it's preseason, what am I going to do? I'm not going to cross-check you in the back of the neck. I'm not going to get start something here. It's preseason. We're just getting the flow of things. I'm not going to be you know, a jerk. Um, so he allowed Benson really to go to the front of the net. I don't know, and I would assume it would be a lot tougher for him to remain in that spot where he tipped the puck if it was the regular season. So just noting that out, I'm not taking credit away from him on the goal, but I do think some some context is needed there. But otherwise, I thought Benson played well. Like He he got a nice chance on a two-on-one um, that he didn't score on, but it was a good shot. He played really well on the power play, I thought. Um, he had almost had a tic-tac toe set up. It went Krebs on the left wall, down low to, to – or excuse me, Benson on the left wall – to Krebs down low, to Greenway in front of the net, and Greenway got robbed, and then Paterka got you know not enough on it to put it away after. Uh, but that play started with Benson. Benson, I thought, looked good on the power play, moves the puck well, good stick handling. Um, so all in all, a pretty solid opening game, I think, for Benson, and we'll talk about him later uh, for a very interesting line that he'll play against the Bruins on. So that's coming up. Well, also, I got one thought on the goaltending and one other prospect that had a uh, had a pretty good game as well against Washington. Uh, we'll get into that before we get to the Sabres Bruins game when we come back as we cover training camp for you. Sabres training camp underway, Harbor Center and Key Bank Center as they get ready for the season. We are 16 days away from the opener. That's it. 16 days from Sabres and Rangers. We are brought to you in the Lockdown Sabres podcast by Jace Case. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace Case. The Jace Case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you a peace of mind so that you are not just hoping that you have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical, make sure you have the medication on hand. Jace Medical is simple. They handle everything from the online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication, delivery, and ongoing consultation and care. Don't get caught unprepared. Get $20 off on these life-saving antibiotics today from Jace Medical by using my code Locked On at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. 
Welcome back to the Locked On Sabres podcast with Sneaky Joe DiBiase. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. A couple more quick observations from Sabres and Capitals. Four to three win in their preseason opener in D.C. Um, Sabres, by the way, if you're wondering, have three straight days of preseason games. Tuesday night, again, home against the Boston Bruins, um, and then back-to-back day games on Wednesday and Thursday. Wednesday at Toronto, Thursday at Pittsburgh. 7 o'clock puck drops for Boston and Pittsburgh, a 6.30 puck drop on Wednesday against Toronto. And I thought all these games were on MSG, but it's only select games, and I should have that in front of you for you ready to go. I do know the Tuesday game against Boston tonight uh, is going to be on MSG. Seven games in total. Here we go. Yeah, MSG Wednesday in Toronto. No MSG on Thursday against Pittsburgh. Sabres.com, though. Uh, At the very least, you could stream all these games. So Sabres.com for Thursday against Pittsburgh and then Saturday against Columbus. Two more observations from Sabres and Capitals. I thought Yuri Kulik looked pretty good. And, man, that shot, is it stands out. He ripped one off the post in the first period from distance, too. He's got a one-timer. And I had the thought when he actually hit that shot off the post, It was on the power play. Nice setup. He ripped it. The thought I had is that is the shot that will replace Victor Olofsson. Victor Olofsson is a one-dimensional hockey player. He's provided that service well for the Sabres in the past years, including 28 goals last year. And they probably will need some goals from him at the beginning of this year until Jack Quinn gets back um, at the very least. So Olofsson gives you that one-timer, but that's it. If he gets traded at some point, who becomes the hired gun next to Tage Thompson? Uh, who becomes the other guy that's just sitting there and he's manning the cannon and he's just popping it off every time he gets a one-timer? Thompson on power play one? Kulik is in power play two for that, I think, in the future. like He's got a shot. And I think right now, of all the players in the organization, who's got the highest potential for their, their shot release? I think Yuri Kulik is the answer to that question. Eric Comrie had a pretty tough night, I think. Um, He wasn't terrible. I don't think he was good either, but he wasn't terrible. He had a tough time with rebounds. I think, you know, two of the three Capitals goals were a little bit on him because of rebound control. He did make a really nice glove save on a breakaway. It wasn't all bad. He played well in the shootout, you know, made the saves in the shootout necessary. So an average performance, I would say, from Eric Comrie. Um... Not a performance, though, that's going to win him that backup job. Uh, he needs to play better than that if he wants a shot at running down Uka Pekka because I think for Comrie, it's not just he – needs, he needs two things to happen for him. He needs to play great in camp in the preseason, and he needs Lukanen to struggle. You know, if if Lukanen struggles and Comrie struggles, I think it's Lukanen. If Comrie plays well and Lukanen plays well, I think it's Lukanen. The only way it's Comrie to me at this point is if Comrie plays well and Lukanen struggles, and then they figure out something to do with UPL. When we come back, a preview of Sabres and Bruins. Why are the Sabres starting Devin Levi when Milan Lucic is on the ice? I got a quick thought on that, Uh, but more so the lineup, Uh, an interesting lineup uh, to get to when we come back here on the Locked on Sabres podcast. We are presented by FanDuel Sportsbook. I love looking at all the futures odds for Buffalo. I love looking at some of the awards props. If you missed our betting bonanza episode, uh, be sure to check that out in the feed. FanDuel It's the perfect time for FanDuel. The NFL season is rocking and rolling. We're into week four. Let's snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. And if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, plenty more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. Sneaky Joe DiBiase back here on the Locked on Sabres podcast. Sabres and Bruins at Key Bank Center. Tuesday night, 
seven o'clock puck drop. Uh, and there's still plenty of tickets available. You know, it's preseason. If you're uh, looking for something to do on Tuesday night, it's kind of warm out too these days. I know I'm wearing a hoodie, but I'm in the basement. It's a little cooler down here. Uh, I'm feeling for a cool place. It's in the seventies today. You can go check out the arena. Always nice to have our, the lineup for this game is super interesting. By the way, as I mentioned earlier, MSG for Sabres and Bruins. Here's the lineup. Uh, and we're, I'll show it to you on our YouTube channel. So remember, you can always watch along on the show. Um, starting with line number one. Line number one is the most interesting part to me of Tuesday's game against the Bruins. And it features Tage Thompson centering Jeff Skinner and Zach Benson. Benson getting a real opportunity to play with some star offensive talent. He did get to play with NHLers on Sunday afternoon. He played with Tyson Jost and Jordan Greenway on Sunday. That was a nice exposure, I think, for him. I think this is even better for Benson. Let's see if he's anywhere near NHL ready. It's interesting to me. Benson is getting more of these opportunities so far, only a couple days in, but he's getting more of these opportunities than Isaac Roseanne is getting, then Yuri Kulik is getting, um, and obviously Matthew Savoy, but that's only because Savoy's not back practicing yet. Maybe Benson's getting the Savoy opportunities, but either way, he's getting it. And we heard, we've heard a little bit from different Sabres beat reporters, and I've even seen a little bit of in practice. You know, maybe this is the guy. He is hyped up. From draft, pro, uh, from draft guys, Scott Wheeler from The Athletic and our man Hadi Kalakash from Lockdown NHL Prospects. Everyone that covers the draft wanted to tell you, oh, this was a steal and he might be the best Sabre prospect right away. Well, if he's legitimately the best Sabre prospect, then maybe he's good enough to be getting these opportunities over former first-round picks, Yuri Kulik and Isaac Roseanne. So Benson skating with Tage Thompson and Jeff Skinner. If he has a great game, you know, he might really – he. this is his opportunity. I'm not sure he'll get this again. Maybe he will. Maybe Don Granato will give him another shot on a line like this. But if he wants to make the team, if he wants any chance, you get a chance with Tage and Skinner, you got to thrive. You got to have a game. So Benson is a real opportunity to thrust his name into the discussion for making the Sabres opening night lineup, but he will have to play well, uh, no doubt, on Tuesday against the Bruins. Line two, Casey Middlestat with I with uh, Yuri Kulik and Olivier Nadeau, uh, of middle-round pick of the Sabres a couple years ago. Now, Nadeau was not supposed to play. Alex Tuck was supposed to play. He's fine, just dealing with soreness, but Don Granato uh, last second decided to take him out of the lineup. But Kulik still getting a chance to play with an NHLer in Middlestat. I just plugged Nadeau in on the projected lineup sheet here on the YouTube channel. Um, just in place for talk, I guess it's possible that Granato shakes it up. Line three, you got um, Tyson Zo T Kozak, excuse me, with Brandon Byro and Isaac Roseanne. More of a Rosine. Sorry, we're doing Rosine now. More of an AHL line. Rosine, we'll see if he could flash anything and maybe earn an opportunity higher in the lineup. And then the line four, just another Rochester line um, with Mason Jops, uh, Brent Murray, and Philip Cedarquist. Blue line, Matias Samus and Rasmus Dahlin. That's your big NHL pairing for the night. Uh, Joseph Sassoni skating with Riley Stillman. And then Mats Lindgren, who shined in the Prospects Challenge, playing with Kel Clegg, who's got some NHL experience. And then in goal, this is the big one. Devin Levi. That's a reason to go down to the arena tonight, right? That's a reason to watch the game. Devin Levi between the pipes against the Bruins. Uh, fans are going to want to see Levi. You know, like it is assumed he's just ready for the number one job. I'm okay with that. I've generally been okay with that thought process that, oh, just plug him in. He's the number one. He's ready to go. You do want to make sure though. I mean, he is a rookie. You know, so let's just, I'd like to see some signs that, okay, yeah, no, we, we're all right for thinking this. I would, that's all I want to see on Tuesday night. Just Levi to do enough that everyone is justified in just assuming he is the number one, but I would expect him uh, to have that type of game. Cause I think he is a, a great talent. Um, and then uh, the other Sabres goaltender in this game will be Devin Cooley camp invite. He'll maybe get in, in the second or third period. Uh, we'll see. Maybe he won't. I'm not sure. It is interesting. I, I almost feel bad making this joke, but it's Milan Lucic's first game back in a Bruins uniform in eight years um, or seven years. He has not been a Bruin for a long time. He's in the lineup tonight. Centennial season for the Bruins. He's back. 
It's preseason. Guys don't usually get that scrappy, although, you know, Ryan Miller did once fight another goalie in a preseason game. Phil Kessel, John Scott, Toronto brawl from way back when. Um, I did have the, I just had the thought, uh, do we really need to put Levi in there when uh, you got Bruins Milan Lucic on the other side of the ice? I, I'm just throwing it out there into the wilderness. I, I don't want to think that way. Um, just, you know, it's out there. You can yell at me if something happens. I don't expect anything to happen. Though. I'm, I'm mostly kidding. But that's it. Sabres and Bruins. Uh, that's it. Uh, 7 o'clock puck drop Tuesday. Enjoy the game. We'll talk about what happens uh, the next time we chat. Uh, so stay tuned for that. If you got a thought on anything I had to say today or if a disagreement on anything I had to say today, uh, be sure to hit us up on our YouTube channel, Locked on Sabres, at Sneaky Joe Sports on Twitter uh, or uh, at Locked on Sabres on Twitter as well. We'll talk to you tomorrow after Sabres and Bruins. Enjoy the game. Or if you don't have time to watch the game or preseason is not really your thing to watch and you're just looking for a recap, come back tomorrow uh, and uh, I'll, have the, I'll have the scoop for you. Thanks for listening. This has been the Locked on Sabres with Joe DiBiase, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.